Whether this is the night before the big test or you're looking to prepare months in advance, I'm gonna show you some practical tips and advice that helped me score five on the AP Calculus AB exam. If you follow this guide and put in the work to study, then I can guarantee that you will at least score four or five on this exam. Um, I, I don't even know where to start with you. I mean, do you even know who you're talking to? The most important thing you should take away from this video is that you need to diversify your prep resources. And you might fall into the trap of thinking, oh, I can just use the Baron's book and it'll save me. No, it won't. It alone will not save you, let me preface that. The reason is because only using one resource to prepare for this test kind of limits your scope and limits your view of the topics. Seeing how to do problems and viewing topics from all sorts of different angles is going to give you a very, very important competitive edge. And often this edge is what separates, the, I found, is what separates the threes from the fours and the fives. What I did was rented the Barron's book from my local library and used this as mainly multiple choice practice. The reason is because the past two decades of FRQs are available for this, which you should be using as well, as well as their relative scoring guidelines. If you also look at the end of the course and exam description, there are also some sample multiple choice and FRQs that I've also found very, very helpful. I also watched the college board review videos. I did the multiple choice and sample FRQs my teacher assigned me. And without all of these different viewpoints, I probably would not have scored a five. And the reason is because you're bound to come across problems that you don't know how to do on the test. It's, it's just the nature of AP tests. But having that edge of learning the topic through different angles is gonna be, give you a much, much, much greater chance at being able to get that problem right, even if you don't know how to do it. Bonk! That's about it, right? There's not much more to it than it. Now that you have all these different prep resources, which I've also linked in the description below, you need to be able to dedicate at least I would say several hours per week leading up to the exam. And you really also need to concentrate and do the problems, and do the practice problems really well before the test. Avoid simply just glancing at a problem and saying, oh yeah, this is how I would do it. The AP test does not care about what you know how to do. The AP test only cares about what you actually write on the actual test booklet. Emphasize the do by going through, when you go through pre practice problems, you want to be going through, going through them in the exact steps that you would actually do, take to do them on the test. That way you don't have to go through problems on the test worrying, oh, am I doing this in the right order? Am I, am I doing it right? No, because you've already practiced doing it correctly in the past, so you don't have to avoid that issue during the real test. And this is especially important because in the heat of the moment, oftentimes we make mistakes that we wouldn't normally make in practice. Do, do you have any idea, any idea who I am? When I prepared for the test, I ended up creating a custom formula sheet, which contained a lot of the more annoying theorems and rules that I usually forget, but which are really important for the AP test. Like for example, the derivative of an inverse function or converting between Riemann sum and integral notation. But those are two examples of things that are just, that I found super annoying to memorize, but that came up for the test nonetheless. And also make sure you know the derivatives and integrals of all the trig functions and inverse trig functions as well as arc sine and arc tangent. Those, especially arc sine and arc tan are really, really important for those certain U sub problems. AP calculus in general has a lot of memorization. So make sure you know these things on the back of your hand because when it comes time for the test, you don't want to be thinking, oh damn, I forgot, I forgot that theorem, because then those those are points that you deserve but you missed just because you didn't memorize them. So please memorize these things, these theorems, and all these things on the formula sheet, which I'm gonna link in the description below. This doesn't have absolutely everything. I, I don't think I put particle motion or differential equations on there, but this is just some things that I found annoying to memorize. Grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, I'm a force of nature. For me, the best way that I actually remembered my mistakes is to create a mistakes packet. And what this is, is pretty much just a bunch of pieces of paper uh, where I just pretty much wrote down all the mistakes that I made. For example, in mine, I had, I had uh, integral and Riemann sum notation. I think I had the derivative of an inverse function, the two conditions of the mean value theorem, or just random things that I forgot, but that I should have known. And 
the thing is, when you write them down, you really, really press them to your memory. It's kind of like that thing, the difference between writing down notes and typing notes. Writing down notes is usually gonna make you remember them better. And in the same way, just dedicate a couple pieces of paper to write down each mistake you've made. So that when you can go, so that when, as you progress, you can look back on your mistakes and you'll not only remember them, but you'll also be like, oh wow, look how silly I was. And so when you come, and so when comes test day, you're gonna fully, fully remember it a lot better than if you hadn't written them down. And when you remember your mistakes, I mean, remembering your mistakes is like kind of how we all learn to do things in general. So when you're going through problems on the test, you're gonna also come across problems that you've done before because you've written them down and you've done them wrong before so because you've written them down in, the, in your mistakes packet. So when you're practicing, just set aside a few pieces of paper for your mistakes. That way, come test day, you know what not to do or how not to do the problems. And I feel like this is definitely going to help you get that five. Basically, kind of a big deal. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I had fun making this. And if you want to see more AP preparation videos, I can talk about other tests that I've, I've scored well on. And yeah, if you want those types of videos, put a comment in the description below, like the video, share with your friends who are also preparing for the AP tests. Good luck on them. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you some other time.